On this episode of Bear Ass Gardenia, we're gonna make a succulent, juicy, decadent meatloaf. Fresh cow meat grinded up to perfection and a very special crunchy ingredient. This meatloaf is gonna have Paula Deen questioning her meatloaf recipe and her whole career. All that and more on this episode of Bear Ass Gardenia. My name is Una Gardenia and this is my cooking show Bear Ass Gardenia, starring me, Una Gardenia, and created by me, Una Gardenia, and my husband who's out in the garden picking herbs. Before I start the recipe, I just want to ask, how are you? The quarantine has just been gosh darn crazy. I've had way too many cocktails. As I said in my last episode, me and Michael have been taking precautions. We put a giant bubble over our garden and have been gardening that way. But this week we decided that wasn't enough. We were too rough in the bubble. It kept popping. It's not my fault. I have extra pointy areolas. Some of us do, right ladies? Just means we're a bit more excited than the others. Because the garden kept popping, we have moved the garden into inside. Our whole bedroom floor is actually covered in dirt. Actually, last night I got out of bed to clean myself up a bit and I stubbed my big toe on a potato. The spud was just growing right out of my hardwood floors and I said, Michael, you should plant the potatoes in the bathtub instead. Instead of using the toilet, I can just fertilize them right then and there. So that's my little quarantine update. Please let me know how you guys are doing through all of this. Just know, Una cares. So yes, it's true. I am making Making a loaf. You might be thinking, Una, do you mean like a bread loaf? No, I do not. I do have an excess amount of yeast, but, <laughs> but I don't need that today. This is purely cow. And this cow was actually butchered in our garden. As you guys know, all of my ingredients are fresh from my garden. Michael works very hard to provide me with every kind of food I need. And I have a lot of needs, you know what I mean, ladies? These eggs may say eggs lands best, but that's just Michael being cute with his little gift wrapping. He likes to just decorate things. These are fresh from my chicken's fat vaginas. And this little stamp here says EB. That actually stands for erected bussy. <laughs> that's just my cute little nickname for Michael. He just likes to stamp things with his initials on it. So this is not just any old ordinary meatloaf. No, it is not. It's actually made with crunchy Ritz crackers. Now I've never tried this recipe before, but it sounds fabulous. This is kind of an experiment for me. Reminds me of when I was in college and they called me Experimental Una. That was my nickname. I tried it all, but back then there were only two genders. Now there's about a hundred. If I was in college now, I would not be able to keep up, but I would try. Now you guys know that I am always original. I make my own recipes. I write my own sexual novels, but today's a little different. I did take this recipe from someone, but I'm always gonna give credit. This recipe is from food.com. It's by Janet Gomez and it's called Cracker Barrel Meatloaf. So this is actually what Cracker Barrel serves at the restaurant, I guess. I don't eat out often, I only eat food that I cook, but I have had Cracker Barrel one time. It was actually quite fabulous. Nothing like my cooking, but it was a nice attempt. Anyways, these are the ingredients I will be using in today's video. Lean ground cow, a chopped up onion. Smells like Michael after a long day in the garden. Mustert, gehop. That's how you say ketchup in Swedish. Sharp cheddar cheese. Light brown sugar. Some milk. I am using almond milk today because our cows had very swollen titties and the milk was not coming out. Michael squeezed and squeezed. It just wasn't happening. So he got some almonds and squeezed their little almond titties and we got some almond milk. Lactation ladies. Ritz crackers. The main event. Eggs. And salt and pepper. S and P. They go together like Ariana Grande and herself Tanner. Last thing before we start, I have a little announcement. I am on TikTok. Yes, it's true. I was talking to my son at Harvard Law School and he's also part-time at Yale getting his doctor degree. And he told me, Mama Una, if you're bored, you should get a TikTok. Everyone's getting it. You're gonna get so many views. Your videos have blown up. So TikTok, that's nothing. After all, you are a clock collector and I told him, him. I'll try it. So he taught me how to use it and I've already posted two TikToks. It's tiktok.com slash Una Gardenia, double O-N-A 
Gardenia. So go follow me there. The link will be at the top of the description. Michael's gonna put it there. Let's start making this juicy loaf. So first things first, we have to crush 32 Ritz crackers. I don't know why it's 32 crackers. It's quite specific, but that's what the recipe says. Not trying to judge other cooks, but... So I'm just gonna count the crackers out and put them into my Ziploc baggie right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Oh look, now I have to open up another packet of Ritz crackers for those two extra crackers because they said 32. 31. 32. Not to be petty, but you wanted me to count the crackers? I counted the crackers. So now I'm just gonna zip the bag and we are going to crush these crackers. Oh wow, <laughs> that kind of hurt. I kind of liked it too. Oh, if you're feeling stressed, which you probably are, try attacking 32 Ritz crackers. It really gets the energy out. So I'm just gonna set this aside and I'm gonna take a big red bowl. Reminds me of Michael's rosebud. I'm just gonna crack two of these farm fresh eggs straight into this bowl. Uno. Cuatro. You're probably thinking, Una, your Spanish has gotten so good. Just think my Cuban homosexual brother-in-law. He is really great. He's been teaching me a lot of things. He even taught me what culo meant. Apparently it means like really extra cool. You're hip, you're culo. I'm just whisking these little fetuses up. Now I have to take my milk. The recipe does call for cow milk, but like I said, all we had around were almond areolas, so we had to do what we had to do. I'm just gonna pour two thirds of a cup straight into the bowl, just like that. And now I have to add my Ritz cracker crumbs straight in there as well. This is gonna get soggy, but I think that's the point. It is gonna make the meatloaf taste quite salty and crumbly. It's gonna be fabulous. Let's just whisk that together. Wow, that looks like pure cat vomit. Once again, this recipe is not mine. Do you see it? Now I'm just gonna add about half of this bag of queso. That is Cuban for cheese. Oh yes, decadent and fabulous at the same time. This is a multitasker. I'm also gonna add some salt and some pepper and a nice handful of my chopped up onions. I don't like to chop onions on screen because I don't like to cry. It makes me look vulnerable. And I just know that's when my friend Karen will jump at the chance to attack me and my drapes. Speaking of Karen, as you all know, she is my friend from book club. And just the other day, I was on Instagram and I saw her out with five of her girlfriends having brunch and mimosas. And right now we're supposed to be social distancing. If you're not social distancing, unless if you have to work, you're a selfish piece of trash. And that's on period. 
And so I DM'd her and I said, Karen, do you not know what's going on? And she said to me, don't worry, I'm a Christian woman. I cannot carry anything evil. And I told her, Karen, I'm a woman of faith. And God told me that all your toilet paper is gonna get smited from the heavens. Bam, gone, burnt to a dust, turned to salt. And she told me that was blasphemous. And I told her, Karen, the only thing that's blasphemous is the trash smell coming from your anus. And that's on period. So now that this is all mixed together, I have to add my lean ground beef. Now the recipe doesn't call for a lean ground beef, but I do not like extra fat. Michael does, cause he wants my ass to get even bigger. But I told him, Michael, if it gets any bigger, you might bounce through the window. And we have to stay inside right now. So I'm just taking a break from the excess fat. After the quarantine, I'm sure Michael's gonna feed me a whole jar of Crisco. I'm just gonna plop this meat straight into, oh, into my bowl. <laughs> that is quite, quite meaty. I've seen very meaty things in my day. I still do actually, every single day, thanks to Michael. But this takes the cake as meatiest, honestly. So I'm just gonna take my clean, freshly washed hands and I'm going to delicately massage, massage this cow, relax it. It may not know it's dead yet, so <coughs> we're gonna pet it. Let it live the fantasy, you know? Okay, now we're gonna start squishing. We're squishing, we're squishing it. Oh, this is going to be quite the wet loaf. Oh. I've heard this noise so many times in the past and it's just always kind of felt like home to me, right? So there is my loaf. What do we think? It honestly smells quite delicious. It smells like Ritz crackers were just mixed into an animal and <laughs> it is just a, the essence of life and Ritz together. So now is the fun part. We're gonna shape this into a loaf. So I just put some parchment paper onto a pan. And I'm just gonna let it fall. Oh, I'm just gonna really form it, get in there and just make any shape I want. I think I'm gonna shape it into something that reminds me of Michael. That is pretty accurate to Michael, if I do say so myself. That looks fabulous. So I'm just gonna pop this into the oven and in about 30 minutes, we're gonna top it with a sauce, which I'm about to make. So now it's time to make the topping. You would think Cracker Barrel would just put ketchup on their meatloaf. Guess not. It's actually quite the decadent recipe. So we are gonna take half a cup of brown sugar. I honestly still don't know what brown sugar is. Honestly, it smells like Michael just shoved some sugar up his ass and that's why it's brown, but <laughs> it's probably some kind of molasses. Now I also have to add half a cup of ketchup. And then a little bit of mustard as well. Be careful, mustard stains everything it touches. One time me and Michael were using mustard for some activities and my anus was yellow for days. Gotta watch out for that next time. Now I'm just gonna mix these ingredients until they're combined into one nice saucy topping. Fabulous, and that's it. So once my loaf has been cooking for 30 minutes, I'm gonna coat it with half of the topping. Then it's gonna go back in the oven for 10 minutes. Then I'm gonna take it back out and put the other half of the coating onto the loaf and then pop it in the oven again for another 10 minutes and then it should be done. So my meatloaf has been in the oven for 30 minutes and it's time to put the first layer of topping on it. And because the loaf is so hot, it might just melt right away. This loaf is extra steamy. It's just dripping right down, just the way it should be. Okay, that looks perfect. We're gonna pop it back into the oven for 10 minutes and then take it out again for the next coating. I just noticed that my air conditioning is on. It's quite loud, isn't it? I told Michael, Michael, you better fix that air conditioning. I know you like me sweaty, but people need to hear what I have to say. I'm Una Gardenia. So it's been 10 minutes and now I'm just gonna add the next layer of sauce on top. Just the right amount. 
perfect. Okay, I'm gonna pop this back in for 10 more minutes and then our loaf should be done. Danito. That's how you say it, done in French. Oh no, there's my alarm. Oh. Gotta tell Michael it's time to wake up and pick some herbs. My meatloaf is completely done. The transference to the plate was a little rough, honestly. It did break a little bit, but that's okay. Nothing is ever perfect, besides me. Let's dive right in, let's slice it open. Ooh, great texture. Very soft, supple, fabulous. Okay, that is gorgeous, wow. It slices up beautifully, Cracker Barrel. Who knew you have this in you? Let's do another slice, why not? Oh yes, that looks great. Is that fully cooked? Might be a little pink on the edge. I might have to pop this back into the oven for five to 10 more minutes, but no worries. The end slice looks pretty well done, so I'm gonna taste that right now. Oh yes, oh that texture is fabulous. Oh my gosh, I'm nervous. Rinse and a meatloaf. Oh, oh that is decadent. Oh wow, I did not see that coming, honestly. That's actually quite, quite the loaf. Oh, it would go fabulous with some mashed potatoes and maybe some Brussels, you know? Mm. Michael is just gonna drop all his herbs when he eats this. I'm gonna be honest though, I don't taste any Ritz crackers at all. It just tastes like a very delicious, flavorful loaf. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Bear Ass Gardenia. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Michael reads them all to me. Also, follow me on TikTok. The link is in the description below. See y'all next time. I'm about to have a quarantine cocktail. Drink up, ladies.